Hi, I'm Josh. Hi, I'm Chris. And we're going to walk you through the SBOM graphics in a way that may be more accessible than you've previously seen. So this, take it in, is the idea that uh, in software, we're all in a supply chain. Most of us are in the middle and we inherit the upstream suppliers that get pushed downstream into products and operational environments, ultimately touching consumers. But let's avoid the medical jargon for a moment and go to something much more basic. So I make uh, homemade uh, granola bars and I made the mistake of sharing one of them with Chris at one of the in-person meetings. And they're delicious. <laughs> so uh, Chris has been fictitiously suggesting I make and produce commercial grade uh, granola bars. So let's look at the supply chain of this fictitious granola bar. So I get uh, these fantastic oats from the farmer's market, Stacy's oats. I have no idea what's in them, but they're tastier than just raw oats. I use some very locally sourced sea salt, some cashews right off the tree, some, some honey cultivated by the, the finest of my local bees. And I also buy some caramel from the, the confectionery stand at the farmer's market. So these are my ingredients. But in the notion and nomenclature of the NTA SBOM, uh, Essentially, some of these are, are atomic parts, right? Salt, cashews, honey, and some are compound parts, uh, which they themselves may have a supplier. What goes into them is currently opaque to me. Um, then there's the final goods assembler, which may be my granola bar. And they're delicious. <laughs> You're too kind. Um, so, so this is my supply chain, uh, at least with uh, a one hop direct dependency like we've discussed. Now, um, I want to distribute these into certain uh, grocery stores. Some of them are boutique and some have an aesthetic and a, a set of values that they promulgate. This particular one, this health food store, um, wants to make sure it's uh, allergy friendly and it's clear where the sourcing materials come from. So I want to sell through this, this uh, um, nature store uh, direct to the consumers, right? The various customers, including the, that, that bloke down at the bottom named Chris. So uh, this is my supply chain, except now when we actually try to add more supply chain transparency, um, Stacy too has a supplier as does the caramel uh, manufacturer. Uh, and it, I come to learn that she uses uh, raw oats, cane sugar, and peanuts uh, in her uh, ingredients list. And obviously caramel is a pretty simplistic version of milk or cream plus uh, sugar as well. So putting this into our nomenclature, um, these atomic parts uh, are then aggregated into these compound parts of Stacy's oats and the caramel into Josh's granola bar. And they're delicious. <laughs> sold into the marketplace to these one through N consumers. Uh, here's the challenge. Uh, not everybody can eat peanuts. Um, and had I not been transparent about the full list of my ingredients, um, someone could have had an allergic response or allergic reaction. And that uh, tainted supply um, or that opaque supply may actually have um, caused anaphylactic shock for someone or an allergic, uh, unpleasant response for everyone except for Chris down there who thinks they're delicious. Uh, but it also may have uh, denied me access to that marketplace specifically. Maybe someone else would sell it, maybe I could sell direct, but um, that fuller, more transparent supply chain at least um, allows the market to make informed risk decisions.